poor sign stress syndrome, the killer inside. Poor sign stress syndrome, also known as malignant hyperthermia, has long been the subject of animal research. Though a lot has been discovered about the genetic disorder, it wasn't until recently, in 1995, that the source had been determined. Today, it is believed that this mutation originated in Germany, you know, that little country in Europe, in the early 20th century, as reports of meat unsuitable for the sausage industry were first described in 1914. It is also suspected that the newly formed recessive gene was the driving force behind the development of the Piatrain breed in Belgium, also of Europe, and the precursor to the Poland-China breed developed right here in the U.S. of A. The recessive porcine stress syndrome gene has likely spread into other breeds of the world by migration and not as a result of further mutations within the genome. This genetic disorder is caused by a mutation of the ryanodine receptor, which causes a huge influx of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This in turn increases muscle contraction and metabolism. The mutant gene RYR1 is primarily expressed in the skeletal muscle. The gene was earlier known as the HAL gene due to the reactions caused by halothane, a volatile anesthetic. Halothane has been proven to bring about the onset of porcine stress syndrome, which is why it was originally thought to be caused by anesthetics and other drugs. How does one detect a genetic disorder like porcine stress syndrome, you may be asking? Just ask the people at the University of Toronto, eh? Using a polymerase chain reaction, they were able to pick out the mutant porcine stress syndrome gene through the use of two restriction enzymes, which broke down the DNA. Although these tests do exist, it is not reasonable on a commercial level to test every animal in this way. When gene testing cannot be done, there are visual cues that can be used to determine if a pig has porcine stress syndrome. Regular symptoms for this disorder include irregular breathing, numerous red blotches on the skin, and a rise in core body temperature. An animal with a severe case will experience rigid muscles and collapse, eventually leading to its death. The disorder can be triggered by many stressors, anything from exercise and vaccinations to mating and hot weather. Seemingly normal activities can become the stressor for pigs with porcine stress syndrome. Once the cycle has started, it is hard to prevent the oncoming injury or death. One of only a few known remedies for porcine stress syndrome is an intravenous injection of dantrolene sodium, a muscle relaxant. Now that we know what the visual symptoms are, we need to look at the physiological changes that are occurring in order to fully understand this disorder. In 1984, some more of our friendly neighbors to the north ran some tests and stressed some pigs out. How was it done? Treadmills and supplemental heat sources. The French Canadians gathered two groups of pigs together, those susceptible to porcine stress syndrome and those resistant. In other words, those without the genetic mutation. Tests were run by placing the pigs on a treadmill in a hot chamber. A catheter was inserted into the interior vena cava, as seen in our lovely animation, so blood samples could be drawn as the pigs were stressed. The objective was to show changes in stress response between susceptible and resistant pigs when heat stressed. In previous experiments, three scientists had proven that short periods of severe heat stress or exercise decreased blood pH and oxygen concentration and increased CO2 concentration, lactic acid concentration, and body temperature. These stress susceptible animals died, yes, died, as a result within 10 to 20 minutes of the stressor. Something of a concern for most commercial swine producers. The French Canadians were trying to expand on that information. What they discovered was significant. One thing these scientists observed was an increase in cortisol levels. Now this should come as no surprise considering a stress is involved and cortisol is a pretty important stress hormone. We would expect both resistant and susceptible pigs to have increased cortisol levels, and in fact they did. The difference was observed in the rate and extent of that increase, as well as during the recovery time. The susceptible pigs experienced an increase in cortisol throughout exercise and also during the recovery period of about 15 minutes, whereas the resistant pigs had a smaller increase and after only 10 minutes 
of recovery, they experienced a drop in cortisol levels. What does cortisol do exactly? It increases the animal's metabolic rate, heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and especially in the stress susceptible pigs, muscle contraction. To no great surprise, the researchers saw an increase in heart rate as a result of this increase in cortisol. Now the difference in heart rate between the stress susceptible and the stress resistant was the length of time it took for the heart rate to drop back down to normal levels. The heart rate remained higher for a prolonged period of time in the stress susceptible pigs during the recovery period. What else did they find? They found differences in creatine kinase levels. As a muscle continues to work, energy levels become depleted. In order to obtain energy to meet that demand, our bodies start to break down phosphocreatine into creatine, releasing energy. The enzyme responsible for this reaction is creatine kinase, which also has many isoenzymes, one being MM isoenzyme. The susceptible animals contain nearly twice the amount of total creatine kinase compared to the resistant animals. The amount of MM isoenzyme, a variation of creatine kinase, was nearly four times greater in the susceptible pigs. The result of this increase, muscle metabolism, and increased lactic acid buildup within the muscles has a profound impact on the post-mortem muscle. Severe heat stress also creates rapid breakdown of muscle glycogen. The muscle pH decreases, making them more acidic. A buildup of lactic acid also occurs due to this process. So in turn, this will elevate plasma protein concentration due to the breakdown of muscle tissue. This breakdown in tissue is what leads to pale, soft, and exudative meat. This occurs when meat takes on a pale pink or red color, while the muscle protein is denatured, which creates the soft texture of the meat. This process can occur in all species of livestock, exposed to pre-slaughter stressors. Poor quality meat is estimated at approximately 25% of the United States pork supply. As a result, there is an estimated loss in production profits of $30 million annually. Although the National Pork Producers Council proposed a resolution in 1997 to get rid of porcine stress syndrome, it is still in existence today. This is primarily because of the enhancement it brings to the muscle of the animals. Carriers of the mutant gene show an increase in overall muscle mass and leaner muscle that is highly valued in the production industry. Another industry that values these characteristics is the show industry. Producers of show pigs want animals that have the highest market characteristics exhibited, thus creating the ultimate prized animal. Because these industries favor lean muscle, porcine stress syndrome has not been eradicated from the gene pool as of yet. Efforts are being made to get rid of the stress susceptible in carrier pigs because of the loss in profits that they create on a yearly basis, but these efforts are slow. One of the main reasons there is not a large push for getting rid of the stress gene is that the carriers provide a higher profit when kept alive until slaughter, and the disorder does not cause harm to humans, therefore the meat can still be used. In today's market, profit is the key to getting rid of porcine stress syndrome. Until it is eradicated, porcine stress syndrome will continue to be a silent killer.